Hi everyone, welcome to uh, another quick video for day two of Punchers Town. Uh, inconsistent day for me yesterday, actually. I think I only picked up one winner in about four places. But uh, it's not going to be any easier today with a really, really hard uh, day's race. And the opening 340 is a 28-horse handicap. Uh, I actually got to go with a horse called Candlestick here. Um, he's been a bit disappointing the last couple of runs before last time. I thought everything seemed to click last time out. So if they finally got the uh, key to him, I think Candlestick could run a great race at about 12 to 1. Uh, in the 420, I actually really like a horse here called Balco de Floss for Willie Mullins and Brian Cooper. Uh, the last twice it's run, it's looked like it was going to take a part in, in the finish, but just died off over three miles. Uh, the time before that, it won easily, though, over two and a half. And then they were running it over too short now. So I think this two and a half trip's ideal. And again, like in the opening yesterday, this should be a free bet to nothing. 2.55, I actually quite fancy Bells Hill here for uh, Willie Mullins and Ruby Walsh. Got beaten only half a length by Bally Optic uh, last time at Aintree. Uh, it had almost exaggerating weighted tactics there, the way he came into the race. He blundered two outs as well. <clears throat> he then, I think, almost got the lead to, well, not too soon, because as I said, it was over-exaggerated weighting, really. And then and he just got out-battled at the end. But if you actually look at it, that ballet optics really fancied. He was strung out like washing behind. Uh, and uh, this is his trip three mile, not the crazy decision to run him over two mile at the festival. So I think Bells Hill run a big race. 5.30, it's hard to look any further than Q card. Uh, he beat, well, he would have beaten Jack Adam and Don Poley for sure. Um, at Cheltenham if he st uh, stood up. He then re-opposed them and beat the both pair of them easily at Aintree. Collingford Lock's got too much to find. Fox Rock, I don't think, is up to this level. Road to Riches is potentially interesting. Smashing, again, I don't think he's anywhere near the level. He's about £14 inferior. It's hard to look any further than Q card. Uh, in the 6.05, which is the, um, the bumper there, it's a horse have tipped up at Aintree and it's uh, mentioned at Cheltenham. I'm going to stick with Battleford here. I think what happened last time at Aintree, <coughs> excuse me, was he hit the front too soon. He was at the front of full two and a half furlongs out. And he was challenged by Bally Andy and he fought him off. He was challenged by someone else. He fought him off. And Bacardis, who came third behind him at Cheltenham, just mowed him down on the run to the line. I'm not surprised Patrick Mullins has stuck with that horse. However, um, I just think Battleford, if they hold on to him for a bit longer, can give Katie Walsh uh, a win here today. You've got to mention Moon Racer because obviously he won the champion bumper so well, but 413 days off against two what I think are above average bumper horses. It'd be an unbelievable training performance. The 640 handicap chase is highly unappealing, uh, but I actually going to go for Ted Veal here because he won uh, under Sir only to only seven and a half lengths defeat last year over two mile. They've been messing around with him over inconsistent trips, over hurdles on the flat, all this that, and the other. But it's an AJ Martin trained horse, so they're obviously looking at the handicap mark. He loves these handicap chases, and if he puts his best foot forward, I think Ted Veal could run a very nice race indeed. In the 7.15, the final one, which is the Mers bumper, a horse again, who attacked at Cheltenham and um, got beaten literally on the line at Aintree, and that's Augusta Kate. Uh, she ran a great race um, at Cheltenham, and obviously with the really good run-ins, up to some degree Ballyand, even though he came fourth, but also um, Bacardi's and Battleford. I think Augusta Kate ran a really good race at Cheltenham. She then came out and got beaten only half a length by Kate Tara um, at Aintree, but they'd spread eagle the field, and she battered a lot of these, that are, um, including the likes of Copper Key, who's in uh, opposition today. Um, providing she hasn't had too long, hard a season, uh, I just think um, Augusta Kate will uh, get another win on the board today, especially with the ground not as heavy as it was at Aintree. Again, apologies for such a quick video, but uh, I'm out on work again this afternoon. Um, but fingers crossed we get some winners, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.